Well, the shift to virtual selling has now accelerated in light of the coronavirus and Sales Tribe has now in response launched the world first career management platform, which is a mobile app as well, of course, for sales professionals to talk about it. The CEO and the co-founder, Graham Hawkins, joins us in the studio. How are you doing? Very well, Aaron. Good to see you and good to have a person back in the studio. I tell you what, even we've got the distancing. Uh, Greg, talk to us about the app. What does it do? Well, the app helps salespeople to rapidly um, upskill and get the skills that they now need in this new modern era. Um, we talked previously, I think, Aaron, about the fact that we're, we've seen this shift to virtual selling now. And so the biggest challenge that salespeople have is understanding how to leverage digital and social and to run virtual meetings. That is to get the attention of and to engage with a modern, empowered, educated buyer who no longer wants to meet them in person. And also cynical buyers as well. How do you kind of overcome the fact that we have been inundated with EDMs, we've been inundated ah. with phone calls, yeah. and we just want some time off. What's it like to be a salesperson during a situation like this? So true. So much noise out there. So on these much platforms. noise. Yeah. <laughs> um, the big challenge we've got, as I say, is just cutting through all of that noise. And really, when you look at what the really successful sellers are doing these days, they are leveraging data and analytics to give the buyer insights and to cut through that noise. What we're all having to try and do is to give the buyer the most delightful experience we possibly can at each and every touch point. And so a lot of what we're doing with the app, the content, the courses, and the conversations that we're having with the platform teaches salespeople how to engage a buyer in this new way of doing things. And what do you mean by insights? What sort of insights uh, can a salesperson help someone who's buying? Well, anything that the buyer can't find themselves on Google, right? We can all go out and do our own research first, we can all go and get independent advocacy from places like G2 Crowd, Trustpilot, TripAdvisor, Google, Amazon Reviews. Um, sellers now need to be able to research all of the analytics and data in their own industry and give the buyer something that they can't find themselves. Some insights, some information that can help them solve a business problem. It's that simple. Now you've got a book there, The yeah. Future of the Sales Profession, it says. What is the future of the sales profession? Well, the future is exactly what we're talking about. Um, I wrote this book three years ago, um, and everything I wrote about back then is now accelerating in this post-COVID world that we now live in. Mm. And so, as I say, the biggest challenge we've all got is just getting the attention of these educated, modern, empowered buyers. As you said, so much noise out there. So talk to us about the Zoom side of things. You mentioned that before, you know, the virtual um, side to it as well. I mean, gone are the days of rocking up to different uh, businesses and trying to sell face to face, right? So how do you get the other party to get on the Zoom compared to the good old days of rocking up to a business? I've sat in cafes uh, in, in there's a, a place in Brighton I was sitting once and one after another, three salespeople walked in trying to sell a security system or whatever it might be to the business. And they were actually given some time. But I'd imagine if they tried to do it virtually, they wouldn't have gotten very far. So how can they try to get further down the track? Yeah, 100%. Look, we all have to be digitally driven, socially connected. We have to be mobile and specialized these days, right? So yeah, um, yeah sellers, the old idea of field sales, which I spent all of my career doing, Aaron, going out into the field, as you just described. But you learn so much from it, don't you? You do, yeah. you do, no question. Going out in the field, having one-to-one -one conversations. Mm. That was fine when the buyer resided out in the field. The buyer now resides online, of course. Mm -hmm. So how do we get their attention online? We have to use social, we have to use digital, we have to use analytics, buyer intent data. We have to be able to leverage all of these new tools that are now available. And if that doesn't work, Russian hacking. <laughs> Russian hacking. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before, but I'll give it a try. <laughs> no, but my point is, is that uh, being out on the road builds a lot of resilience, doesn't it? it? Does. So um, it's being, you know, hit in the head every day, but getting back up the next day with a big smile, hoping that that sale could yep. change your life as well. Yes. Um, and, and bringing that now across to trying to get people um, virtually to do it, that would be a big challenge. Talk to us the difference in resilience because they'll both need it, right? Yeah, they are. And look, um, you know, the salesperson still has that fundamental challenge of being able to scale what they're doing. Mm. The old fashioned one-to-one -one engagement, it doesn't scale the way businesses now need to. We live in this global digital connected economy. So we have to be able to do things at scale. Yeah. And there's a real balance there between personalization and personalization at scale. Yes, you know? that's exactly it. I mean, every business, Apple do a pretty good job of personalization at scale and, and the lessons that we can learn from there. We've got to leave it there, but really appreciate your time. Good to see you. Thank you Thank so you. much. And we look forward to another book. You'll have to update it now too. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Graham Hawkins there. Thank you so much.